I've uh, always known that there's a God and I can't not ever remember not knowing I mean, that there is a God. Okay, never. My first impression that I can remember was um, Mr. Corder, Elmer Corder, had a, or lived next door to us and had a granddaughter that they lived in Louisville. And when she came home, we were in our backyard swinging and she came over to tell, tell me that she had gotten saved. And I don't think that I knew about, enough about God at that point in time to be saved, but I do think that it gave me a time to know right from wrong. You know, I thought about this and, you know, we were in and out of church when I was young, but I remember the one that sticks out the most to me as when my, my dad's mom passed away. We were at a funeral and I had never seen my dad cry. I was probably 10 years old. And um, anyway, it, it bothered me, um, really bothered me. And I'm pretty sure I was already saved at this point because I think I was nine when I was saved. And I remember it scared me because, I, you know, your dad's not supposed to do that. And um, so anyway, later that night, I prayed and asked God to make my dad okay. And I became aware of that because he was okay. And um, so that's a child's prayer, but that was probably um, the most, um, I guess, the, the strongest memory that I had, the first experience that God does work in our lives through prayer. And um, I even remember what I had on that day. Well, I was very young. I was probably, you know, six, seven years old when I remember going, but it's uh, going to church with my mom and dad, them taking me to, had two great parents that took me to church and uh, the, uh, uh, remember, you know, singing Jesus Love, learning about God's love, singing Jesus Loves Me and different songs and learning in Sunday school about God and His love. That was the first thing I remember. Well, I, I grew up in a coal mining camp uh, and uh, we always, and my parents were Christians. Uh, my dad later on became a minister. And my, I always knew there was God. And there was lots of uh, creeks and uh, woods in the back of our house. And, uh, and, I, and my dad especially, my mom too, but there was nine of us kids, so she didn't have time to do a lot of, uh, he would always tell us how blessed we were to live where we lived and how beautiful it was. And he was point, he would point out um, wildflowers and uh, the different trees. And uh, uh, this part of Kentucky, I didn't know this until then, but I, until I went to, um, to college and I took a course in dendrology. And this part of the world has more different uh, kinds of trees than any other place in the world. So I will always knew. Yeah. I, I just did. Yeah, that's awesome. So I grew up in church, and until I was 11 years old and my parents divorced, I was in church every time the doors opened. So really, I don't remember ever not knowing there was a God. And my impressions of God were that He was big and wise and, and mighty and all-knowing and all those things. Just, you know, from the beginning. I can't remember not having an impression of God, I think. I'm sure I didn't have when I was younger, but I don't remember those, those times. You know, I honestly don't remember how old I was. I, I guess my first impressions of God was... Well, in, in Sunday school and, and Bible school when I was, what, five, six, seven years old, probably. Uh, I guess at that time, God was just somebody that made the world and everything in it, you know. And, and I think as you get older, you absorb a little bit more of, of really who God is, what He did. And then you come to the understanding that, yeah, God gave his son Jesus and Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And I think probably about that time you start to realize that 
you're probably a sinner and, and just exactly what God and Jesus has done for you over the, over the years. And I think that takes a little, I think that takes a little time, yeah. I don't know that I can really pinpoint my first impression. I was born and raised in this church. All my friends starting out were in this church. Um, we all lived in the community. And so everything we did revolved around church. So whether it was playing softball, whether it was going on trips in the summer, the Cincinnati Reds game, we just, we were always active. The youth were together and, and church was always very important in my family. So, you know, I just, my first impression of God was that He was a big part of my life, or He was going to be a big part of my life because He was a big part of my family and of my community. And so I just, as long as I was growing up, you know, church was always first and foremost in my life. So I grew up in church. Um, my dad was a pastor there in my life, but really didn't have much understanding until I was maybe nine. And I was sitting at home one day, and there was a huge storm going by, like tornadoes and everything. I was scared, so that's kind of when I realized, oh, if I die right now, I'm going to hell. And I didn't like the sound of that, so. Well, I think my first day at church was I was about five days old. So I grew up in church, and I was consistently told about God to a point where I honestly don't have an earliest remembrance of that. But what I do have is my earliest remembrance of being in Bible school at nine and feeling a real sense of pressure that I needed to become a Christian. That was the first time that I really felt that. And I had a Sunday school teacher who was very um, persistent. And she would ask me all the time, you know, have you made, are you ready yet? And it made me very resistant. And it took me until 13 before I ever actually accepted the Lord. And I think it was mostly just because I didn't want somebody telling me what to do. But as far as God, my earliest memories of God were just a fear that something was going to happen to me and I wouldn't be ready. I wouldn't go to heaven. As long as I can remember, God has been an important part of my life. As a young child, I would spend the nights on Saturday nights with my grandparents, get up on Sunday morning and put on the frilly dresses, go to church on Sunday morning, spend the afternoon with them, and then go back to church with them on Sunday nights. And then they would take us home. Marty Shadowan helped me understand uh, what was going on. He came and sat with Lee when she had her back surgery, and she almost died at that point. And he came and sat with us every day. And we hadn't even been to church out here, okay? Not even the first time, okay? He didn't, the only reason he came because it was his hot dog's sister, okay? And he came out there, and I mean, just about every day he came and sat there for a long time with us every day, okay? And talking to us and different things. And We started coming to church here in, about in 19, I'm not sure, 1954 maybe, somewhere that we moved to this area. And, and uh, so the best that I can think of is when I was coming to Sunday school and Bible school, I remember Bible school more, uh, people like Gertrude Fisher or uh, Mildred Gardler, um, Lois Coomer, people like that that taught through through Sunday school, but I don't remember anybody sitting down with me at any point during that time and specifically talking to me about God. Well, when I was younger, I went to church with um, several friends. Um, when we met, we lived in Illinois, and I remember going to church when I was younger, being um, that. I was probably five, six when we moved back here and in elementary school, went with a friend of mine all the time. We went to Beacon Hill and they had all kinds of activities. I participated, um, went to church all the time with them. And uh, one of my um, friends at the time, her father was a deacon and um, he helped me. Well, I would say my mother and, and, uh, and dad too, plus uh, Sunday school teachers and uh, uh, all the folks at, at church and uh, 
then of course later on the pastor talked to me which is uh, all those fine folks my parents uh, especially uh, my parents and then there were uh, at this time in history um, the coal camp where I live uh, we had uh, really good neighbors and we all went to church and some of the ladies shouted in church and, and those kind of things and they would always, uh, uh, I mean, they took care of each other's children so they would answer questions about how to be saved and, and, and about Jesus. So again, I was in church, so I had a lot of Sunday school teachers. I had a pastor that I remember back then, Brother Mason, who was a wonderful pastor. I was really good friends with his daughter also, so I was around him a lot uh, outside of church as well. And then my parents also, and then my grandfather was also a Baptist preacher, and he was a wonderful man who, you know, I hope I can be just a portion of he, what he was to all of us. He was a wonderful man. His, my grandmother also, but my papa probably was number one. Oh gosh, there was, now I'm gonna go back to Bible school and, and like I said, uh, early uh, Sunday school, people like Lois Coomer, Mildred Girdler, Minnie Girdler, uh, Gertrude Fisher. Uh, there's been so many, and most of them are ladies, I think. Well, like I said, I grew up in church every Sunday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, I was there. So I was consistently told about God, and my dad and mom were both very good Christians and very faithful to talk to us and answer questions. So I don't really have a specific person. My first husband's father was my pastor growing up, and he's the first one, he was also the youth leader, that I remember specifically talking to about my salvation and him answering questions, but I could have just as easily gone to mom or dad or anybody else but it was pretty it was a pretty consistent message in my life i never had a time that i ever felt like there was no one i could ask i had a lot of really good sunday school teachers and uh, training union teachers when i was growing up um, maxine salyers was my sunday school teacher a lot and i can remember a lot of the messages that she would give us um, i remember willard willard and lois hansford being my training union teacher brenda jones was always involved in a lot of things that i did um, you know so i just had a lot of people well my aunts my aunt patty and uh, my aunt lana my mom often served in a lot of uh, different areas of the church and would be my teachers and so i just had a lot of people around me that served as teachers that really taught me a lot as i was growing up i can remember being in uh, youth choir and children's choir and always loved to sing so that was fun for me so i just had a lot of people tied to the church that really encouraged me and pushed me into you know direction as i was growing up as a child I've always had great godly role models, but I remember sitting at the table with my grandparents in the kitchen, and my grandfather was very patient and he would answer questions and teach, and I would learn about the salvation plan from him. When Lee got better, we decided, well, she wanted to go to church. I didn't really want to go to church then, and I didn't, okay. But the Lord started convicting me, too, after Marty talked to me. So the one Sunday, she decided, she called Marty and said, you know, that she wanted to get baptized. And, and I hadn't told her yet that I was even under conviction, okay. And she uh, told Marty, but she wasn't gonna go down that Sunday because it was Easter Sunday. She didn't want everybody to be there and, and didn't want to go down to Easter Sunday. So we we went to church that Easter Sunday and we were sitting there. She must have been as bad as I was, under conviction as bad as I was. She couldn't stand it 
not going down, and I couldn't either, so we both went down on Easter Sunday. <laughs> After we told Marty we wasn't, she wasn't going to. I, Marty didn't even know I was going to come down, okay? So we went down that Easter Sunday and, and surrendered our lives to the Lord then. And, uh, it was such a blessing. I mean, it was an exciting thing. I was on fire. <laughs> you know, it, uh, I, it, I just enjoyed it so much when we went down and did that. Man. When I was younger, then we went to GA camp. And I know that I went forward to make a decision for Christ, but I don't know if when I went, if I, I'm, I'm sure that they led us through the prayer of salvation, but I don't know if I understood if I went because other friends were going, uh, going forward. So I don't know my purpose. I can't remember my purpose exactly of going forward, but I do remember sitting on a bench um, at GA camp. So then uh, later in life, then, I mean, it had bothered me. And so um, when Jill was born, I went through a depression. I went through a postpartum depression. And um, so I was afraid to live. I was afraid to die. I was afraid of Jesus coming back. And um, there was a man that lived next door to us that he came to church all the time. And and uh, so I talked to him about it one day and I told him I, that I was afraid. And he told me, he said, if you're afraid of Jesus coming back, then you're not saved. And that that really that really bothered me a whole lot more too. So I can remember that one day, uh, it was one evening that I got down on my hands and knees. And when my, when my, with my face to the floor, I told God, I said, God, I don't know if I said everything right. I don't know if I did the right thing, but God, you know my heart and you know that I want to be saved. And I ask you to come into my life if I haven't already been saved. And, and when I got up off that floor, I never doubted my salvation again. And I asked to be baptized again because it was a true believer's baptism at that point. My experience, like I said, I was, uh, I'm pretty sure I was nine. I mean, that's been a long time ago, but um, um, I had attended a lot and just um, felt God working with, um, you know, in me as a child and um, went up and asked, uh, you know, for help. And I had talked to her dad, you know, on Sundays we went out. Um, a lot of times after after church, I went, with, went out with them. And um, it just kind of went from there. He's deceased now, but he was he was such a great, great guy. I appreciated it. And um, still friends with her today. We don't do things um, like we did years ago, but I live close to them, and that's how that got started. But he helped me, and, and I participated a lot um, throughout the years, um, especially when I was younger um, at that church, and just grew. Um, as a Christian in my experience was, um, I just remember feeling relieved, even at that young age. Well, I, like I say, um, it was, uh, I felt the Lord speaking to me. I was probably 12 years old or so, and uh, uh, my mother had talked to me about it and prayed for me, I'm sure, and, and then uh, my pastor, who's uh, uh, Henry Haynes was his name at the time, out Eden Baptist Church, he uh, talked to me. He he knew the Lord was dealing with me, and so I accepted Christ, and uh, that's the best decision I ever made. So that's great. So I was eight years old, and this I do remember. Um, I was in church, and you know, I had asked questions all along the way, and you hear about salvation if you're in church, obviously, but I actually really felt the Holy Spirit at, on this Sunday and the Holy Spirit was just said you know it's time for you to go forward and accept Jesus as your Savior and I and, and I do remember that vividly so um, eight years old in church in a church service and that's when when I was saved there again that was I was 12 years old and you go back to my time at Cundiff School out here. When they held a revival here at Pleasant Hill, it was morning and evening. And Mr. Kane was my teacher at Cundiff. He was uh, six 
No, Miss Kane was fifth and sixth. He was seventh, eighth, and ninth. But anybody that wanted to come to the revival would be able to leave school, march up here to the church. Now, you, you had to sit together. You just couldn't scatter all over the church, and you had to sit in the front pews. And uh, I think during the week of that fall revival, it was in the fall, uh, that's when I really started to grasp the fact that I wasn't saved and I was going to hell because they preached hell back then quite a bit. And that was a place I knew I didn't want to be. And as the week went on, later in the week, I was, I was in the third pew on the right side. I remember just exactly where I was. Uh, that's when I accepted Christ as my Savior and went up and uh, I'd like to say I've lived uh, a Christian life all those years after that, but like everybody else, I, I'm, I'm a sinner saved by grace. And, uh, but uh, that, was, that was when I accepted Christ and I was baptized either two or three days before my 13th birthday. I don't remember exactly, but it was right before my 13th birthday. I talked to Dad, and I didn't want to, like, confront Dad, so I just wrote him a note one day and said, I think I need to get saved. So he found the note a couple of days later, but he found it, and he ended up talking to me about getting saved, and I accepted Jesus. And then I was nine, so um, I probably took three or four years before I was a Christian, but it took me three or four years to really want to grow in my faith and stuff. So maybe 13, 14, somewhere in there was really the time I started wanting to grow in my faith. What was that like once you hit that, that particular time in your life as far as wanting to grow? So, like, when I got saved, like, like I said, I was nine, and I could just feel like a peace overcame my body. Like I'm all right. I know where I'm going. Like God's God's in control. He's got me. So I didn't have to worry about that anymore. Well, like I said, I was super resistant, and I had Sunday school teachers. I had a pastor, not not the one that I was talking about. My father-in-law. He was a wonderful human being, and he never. I never felt pressured by him. But I had an earlier pastor who was very persistent. And so I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And it was one of those situations where you go on Sunday and you listen to the preacher. I felt very convicted. I wanted to go forward, but I just hung on, you know. And then like at 13, there was a movie that came out to the local theaters called For Pete's Sake. And I think it was put out by the Baptists. And it was basically a left behind type situation where, you know, you might possibly not get taken in the rapture. And that got really strong on my mind and I would go to bed and couldn't sleep because of it. And so one Sunday I finally gave it up and walked the aisle and as I did, two of my friends, also 13, both of them came with me. So, you know, hopefully I had some influence on them. Maybe I didn't and I just was the one that started first. But it was a good experience and I felt like a huge burden had been lifted off. I honestly think I was saved sitting at that kitchen table with him. Formally though, I met with our pastor in our living room and repeated a prayer accepting Jesus as my Savior. When was that? I was a young girl. I was 10. Well, when I was 13, <laughs> I grew up in an old-fashioned United Baptist Church. And it was uh, uh, the mourner's bench. And it was, uh, and I felt led, and I felt led to go to the mourner's bench when I was 13, and I did. And, um, and you know, I had people laying their hands on me and praying, and, and I remember getting up from the mourner's bench, and everybody, 
rejoicing that I had got saved. Well, I think, I, I know I had the drawing of the Holy Spirit. And my life after that, as I, as I grew up, I worked in the church, I taught Sunday school, I taught Bible school, because after I got married, I went to a Southern Baptist church. And it was different. And, um, and then um, I, I got to searching because, um, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, the church I grew up in was wonderful. We had Sunday school and we had, uh, but we, we didn't have a Brother Danny and we didn't have, uh, uh, missions were not, uh, they were taught, but they weren't, um, it wasn't something that you, talked about and uh, it wasn't something that was stressed. So I, I don't know, um, I think maybe at 13 I didn't make a full commitment. So at about age 50, uh, the Lord got a hold of me <laughs> and um, and I've never been the same. And uh, so I was baptized again. The first time I was baptized in a creek, the second time in baptistry. And and I I'm in such awe of him. <laughs> 